Solar is like collecting rain. The inverter is like the gate that keeps my reservoir from filling up too much and overflowing. The battery itself is a reservoir. And then the output is how we're gonna use the water. Hey, this is Tyler with TJX Survival Survival Dispatch, and I am going to simplify solar systems for you today. Solar panel systems. A lot of people get really overwhelmed with solar panel systems. Once you understand each individual component, they are really simple. You have a solar panel, charge controllers, a battery, and inverters. That's it. Outside of that, when you see some sort of solar panel system, you see all of these boxes and all of these things. All that you're looking at is multiple charge controllers, multiple batteries, and one or two different types of inverters. That's it. So if we can understand what each component does and simplify it in a way that even the simplest of brains like mine can understand, you get solar. It's really, really straightforward. Today, I'm working with the Lion Energy System. I really like this company. They're local to me in Utah. I can literally drive over and grab stuff I, if I need to. If I call, I'm gonna get a English speaking person that will talk to me directly. I really like that. So it's a good system to show. So this is their UT3500BT-H. All that you need to know is it's 280 amp hours, which is like a capacity, how much the reservoir of electricity can hold, and it's got a Bluetooth connection. That's it. Outside of that, all this other stuff is just extra. One of the ways that I like to explain solar is this. It's like rain and a reservoir. If you can understand that the rain collection device is the land. When you have a big amount of land, you can collect more water to fill up your river. And then your river goes to a reservoir where it stays until you need it. Solar is basically the same thing. The solar panels are like my space of land. The more, the more land that I have and the more sunlight or rain that I have coming down, the more I can gather in my river and fill up in my reservoir. The battery clear, clearly being the reservoir. Now, if your battery is at 99 to 100%, you're not gonna load anything else in there. And just like a reservoir, if we don't want it to overflow, we have to have a device that is a charge controller that's kind of like a gate that keeps it from overflowing, in this case, starting fires or destroying your battery. So your charge controller, what matters is that your charge controller can handle the wattage input from your solar panels. So as an example, I have a 100 watt solar panel there. I have a 400 watt charge controller. So I can daisy chain four of those solar panels together before I exceed the total capacity of the charge controller. Even if I went over this, which you shouldn't do, I have to have 100% direct sunlight for it to actually blow. So when you see multiple charge controllers, that's because they have multiple solar panels. As an example, if I had charge controllers that could only handle 100 watts, I could only put one 100 watt solar panel on that. And therefore I would need four charge controllers to do 400 watts. Since this is a 400 watt charge controller, I can handle four solar panels that are 100 watts or two that are 200 watts or one that's 400 watts. If I need more, then I have to add another charge controller into the system. This battery is pretty unique in that it has some computer systems inside of it that keep it from overcharging, that will allow it to, to charge quickly and allow it to discharge quickly. And there's a heating system inside of it as well. Uh, Lepo uh, is an amazing new technology, but it has its drawbacks. There's some things that we just can't change in physics. And one of them is that it can't charge the battery when it's really cold. So there's a heating element inside of this that will warm up the battery above about 51 degrees when it gets too cold in order to give it the ability to charge. 
that's amazing because this system is going to go into an overlanding trailer where it's going to get cold. And I don't want to be charging and ruining a battery without it being too cold. Therefore, the solar heat, the solar panel energy that goes into the battery will turn on the heating element and warm it up so then it can start charging. This is a nice protection to have. One thing that's unique to solar that can't really be explained with my rain and water tank analogy is inversion or changing. This is a 12 volt battery. That's 115 volts inverter. What this means is if I have a 12 volt system, I got to run it straight off the, va the batteries. If I want to run something off of my wall outlet, like a microwave or I don't know, normal stuff that you plug in the wall, I, I have to run it through this inverter. This inverter will only put out 2,500 watts peak output and 2,000 continuous output. This is plenty enough for me to run a microwave, a small air conditioning device, all the lights, the water pump that runs the trailer, any of those things. In reality, the only things I have to run off of this inverter is my wall outlet, a microwave, and an air conditioning unit. This is a small air conditioning unit. The really big ones need to run off 3,500 watts. I can also plug in my Overland trailer and if I want to run an air conditioning unit that's over 3,500 watts, I can run it off the generator and I can have a separate line for that. So make sure that the appliance that you're plugging in doesn't exceed the output of the inverter or you're going to let the smoke out. Lastly, I want to be able to plug it into the, my house when I get home. And the way that we accomplish that is with a charge controller like this. This is an IOTA charge controller. It's a good company. All that's going to happen eventually is I'm going to replace these alligator clips with a physical mount to the battery and then we plug it in. This way when I get home I plug it in, charge the battery up off of my house and then when I'm out in the wild I plug in solar or run the solar off of the, the camper itself to trickle charge the battery. When I need to discharge I run my 12 volt right off the battery and my 110 off of the inverter. Hopefully that simplifies charging and solar for you. Again, it's just a solar panel that takes in 100, 200, 400, whatever watts, goes to a charge controller that has to have the same or larger watt capacity as your solar system so that you don't blow it out, which slowly charges your battery. Then when we want to take the electricity out, we either run it through the inverter that takes it from 12 volts to 115 volts, or we connect it right to the power and run our 12 volt system. And again, solar is like collecting rain. The inverter is like the gate that keeps my reservoir from filling up too much and overflowing. The battery itself is a reservoir. And then the output is how we're gonna use the water. If you think about it in terms like that, solar becomes a really simple system. Thank you to Lion Energy for providing me with this equipment. You're going to see this installed in an overlanding system in the future. Hopefully this is valuable to you. If you have questions about systems like this, we're going to have more videos in the future. Hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.